All right, um, we're back. Look at that, just like that. Um, if you have been joining us for the past couple of panels, thank you for joining us for the last one of the night. Honestly, there's a, a, a statement made in the last um, panel from one of the attendees saying that this should be a whole day long conference and I couldn't agree more. There's still questions we did we weren't even able to get to so I don't want to take up too much time in this introduction. Uh, I want to get straight to it because we have a lot to talk about. This is a very exciting topic I think everybody has been waiting for. This is the Beyond Borders celebrating the WNBA in Canada and of course it's Women in Basketball Month presented by Penny Appeal Canada. So let's just dive right in. We're going to uh, overview the session real quick. We're joined by three women to highlight the excitement and optimism around the WNBA's expansion into Canada. Now, we're gonna be just discussing around investing in women, highlighting the potential for growth and the expansion of the WNBA, the league's efforts to increase the overall investment in women's basketball, as well as a reflection of the journey it has been to bring the first WNBA game to Canada coming this May, as we're so pumped for. I know I am, you can't tell. Um, and we're going to just discuss opportunities that come with the possibility of establishing a new team in Canada. So unfortunately, we had um, a, a bit of an under the weather call in from Bridget Carlton. So she's not able to join us today. So I might fill in a little bit of insights. But honestly, I'm so happy to just give you give the panelists that we have even more time to elaborate and fill in any more details. And so uh, let's just drive right on in, starting with Leah McNabb. She is the Senior Vice President and Managing Director for MBA Canada. Leah is responsible for development and growth in the league's business in Canada, including television and digital media, marketing and retail partnerships, licensing, special events, and basketball development. Leah, you are busy. She's also the recipient of the Canadian Sports Business Five to Watch Award back in 2018 and the Under 40 Award for Sports Executives in Canada. She's a board member for Canada Basketball, as well as the Sponsorship Marketing Council of Canada. And she's passionate about creative thinking, marketing, women's empowerment, and food. So Leah, we need to go get dinner and talk more about food. Um, Noelle Quinn, thank you for joining us. I know it's probably been a busy, busy day for you. So I'm going to dive right on in with you as well. Been, she, sorry, Noelle Quinn has been involved with the game since the age of eight. She received a, a full scholarship to play at UCLA from 20, sorry, from 2003 to 2007. She played 12 seasons in the WNBA, 10 seasons, sorry, 10 years overseas as well. She started coaching at the high school level while she was still playing for Seattle Storm. So talk about that passion for coaching. Um, started off as an assistant with the Storm back in 2019, elevated to an associate head coach in 2020, and then promoted to head coach at Seattle Storm back in 2021. And Noel, I remember interviewing you and that was still fresh off the press. So I'm excited to have you on board with this panel as well. And then 2022, she became the lead assistant for the Canadian Senior Women's National Team uh, for Canada Basketball. Um, and now Nikisa, um, Nikisa, she just incredible woman over here. She, you know, she's the founder of Canada's first paid women's basketball league, Hoop Queens. Um, many panels that Nikisa has been on, I know of, I've attended myself. She's a community activist and a voice for the underserved and underrepresented. Um, Nikisa, glad to have you on. Um, looking forward to this discussion with everybody. So diving right on in, as I said I would, um, it was announced that tickets for the very first WNBA game in Canada on May 13th were sold out. I remember the pre-sale sold out in a matter of minutes. And then when the final sale actually came on, like the full sale, it was only a, a couple hours. So um, that's a powerful statement as it indicates the appetite for women's sports, specifically basketball in Canada. Now, Noelle, I want to start off with you in this case. Um, what does this accomplishment mean for both the league and what does, uh, what does this reflect about the growth of women's basketball in Canada that you've seen? I think it's amazing. You know, I was just sitting in our league meeting and um, when they say sellout, it's 22,000. Sellout isn't 5,000, 10,000, 22,000. It's a, a lot of fans and um, there is great power in that and progress in that and understanding that um, there is an appetite for women's basketball. Um, 
globalization is something that is very big for the WNBA as we move forward um, to just growth. Um, and starting in Canada shows that this is a place that is very excited about basketball, women's basketball particularly, but the growth in that will come um, for youth, um, specific, specifically young girls to see like, hey, one day I can actually be a pro basketball player and play in my native land, Canada, and be a part of that. So um, the fact that the fans showed up and showed out, um, going to create a, an amazing atmosphere for this WNBA game to happen shows that there's a lot of promise and growth um, and there's there's no ceiling for what we can do um, for for basketball and sport especially in Canada. Mm -hmm. Absolutely and I remember talking to Bridget Carlton when the news first broke and she was so excited um, at the fact that you know she could play on home soil in front of young uh, girls and boys and she really emphasized that it's important to see like for boys to see professional women's sports at the highest level in Canada as well as that also promotes growth but Lee I'm going to send it to you because you are a huge huge part of that reason uh, why it was able to happen and just in terms of and we'll get into the nitty-gritty of it but in just in terms of um, the reflection of the growth of women's basketball that you've seen in Canada what has that been? I mean it's been amazing um, I think that a lot of folks in this business industry of sponsorship and, and, you know, live events have underestimated women's sports. And it took, you know, kind of the vision to say, we want to sell out the big venue that the men play in and we think we can do it. Um, and now that we've done that, our job really is to execute a really great game, to make sure that we drive national viewership and to really prove to all of the sponsors that have come out of the woodwork for this game. And we're going to announce those sponsors really soon. We have more than 10 of them, which is exciting, is that, there's opportunities to invest against the W every single day, 365 days a year in Canada. We don't have to wait for there to be a franchise or a game. Um, and that is really the challenge that we've thrown down for ourselves going forward. Ooh, I wanna dive into like the specifics in that conversation in just a minute, but Nikisa, I would love to like listen to your side of it because you are one of the reasons why women's basketball is growing at the professional level um, in this country as you have started a league like what what have you seen in terms of growth yeah honestly like it, it's crazy because if you would have asked anybody any sponsor or any company to invest in women 10 years ago or in a women's league like hoop queens or the WNBA it would have been like oh you know the we're at our capacity like we don't know if it's um, feasible at this time and all a whole bunch of bag of excuses, but I feel like everyone is starting to feel the wave and um, get with kind of get with the program um, with the, 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 the growth of women's basketball and especially here in Canada because we are a hotbed of talent and we see that there's so many, um, you know, D1 girls that are in um, America playing and then there's all there's a whole bunch of WNBA Canadian girls and um, yeah, I, I just feel like, you know, the, the game is definitely growing and um, it's growing at a rapid weight and, and you know, it's whether you, you're going to get with it or get lost kind of thing. And I, I feel that everyone's starting to, um, you know, put their money where their mouth is. So, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, and one thing that like kind of ties into this and I, I kind of want to see your perspective on this, because for those who don't know, um, Kisa, she, she was a great baller back in her day. And actually we played against each other at one point. Um, <laughs> girl, I'll catch you on the court again. <laughs> but um, I want to ask you, ask you, you about how you've seen interest change since, you know, you know, our generation was growing up with it versus now. Definitely. Um, I feel like there's definitely more, a lot more opportunities and a lot more leadership. Um, you know, there's a lot more girls, you know, coaching, a lot of, a lot of girls getting back to the game. Um, I feel like, there's there's just more opportunities I feel like there's everyone starting this generation I feel like we're just like we're not taking it or not taking no for an answer and we you know we want to be the change that we want to see uh we're providing our our own opportunities for ourselves whether you know men are supporting it or not so um the game is definitely changing and it's, it's rapidly growing and I, yeah like I said like everyone is kind of just getting getting with it or getting lost yeah so it's, it's interesting because you know uh, like I have an aunt that was like originally kind of in the WNBA as well. She had a lot of tryouts when it was first coming, but it came too late. Like that's a whole separate discussion, how late the WNBA came for some amazing players. But yeah. Noelle, I would like to hear your perspective because how much has it changed in the interest and growth that you've seen from 
you know, even your early days of remembering picking up a basketball or even, you know, to, to where you are now, like, was it on TV that much? Like what, what was your experience in seeing professional women's basketball? Yeah, I was actually very um, blessed to have an opportunity to watch the Sparks growing up. So I'm from Los Angeles and my mother was able to get season tickets from the inaugural season. So for a young player like me to be able to go to the the forum at that time, the Great Western Forum, and to see Lisa Leslie, Delisha Milton, and Penny Toller um, at that age, um, it was I, I think it was special. Like not, not everyone was able to do that, but I do remember even as being like a student of the game and a fan of the game, the game was on the Lifetime Network. And I don't know if you guys know that network out here. It's like those movies that like middle-aged women watch. It's like the Hallmark <laughs> Channel? Yeah, exactly. You know, and it was, you know, on Lifetime, you know, on TV, but not a lot of games. And um definitely not on major networks. So to see the growth in the game being on ESPN, to, to being on primetime and ABC. Um, the other thing is just social media in general, a little bit more accessible to see your favorite player or these athletes in even in, in middle school, high school, college that, that you can garner interest early um, because of the visibility that wasn't really there when I was growing up. Um, you just had the posters or really you had USA basketball um, to really see like the best of the best women playing at a high level. So, you know, again, for me, I was afforded a great opportunity to to be able to sit in the seat and be a fan and watch the W at an early age. Um, but where I sit now as a coach, I see there has been tremendous growth um, in the marketability, the mark, the marketing of the league of, of players and still have a ways to go, but it's getting a lot better. Yeah, I'm like just slightly jealous that you saw Lisa Leslie play. I'm still like processing that point that you just made right now. Just still thinking about that. Um, <laughs> that was my teammate too. So that's crazy. What was it? So you play, it's like you're when the person you watch also becomes your teammate. That must have been incredible. Yeah, I feel like when she walked in the gym, like she was floating on air. It was an amazing experience. <laughs> She's the GOAT, you know? So it was surreal, but again, I afforded a, a really good opportunity because of just my resources and, and of, of my mom as well. That's amazing. Oh, um, Leah, I, I want to get to you because this is probably a, a very, very important question that we would love to hear your perspective on. Um, and basically, um, how did you make it happen? <laughs> but more so, what were the conditions uh, that were right for hosting the first WNBA game in Canada now? So I think there's a, a handful of conditions. Um, one was we received a lot more uh, broadcaster support over the last few years around WNBA. And so that was helpful. Um, this game is going to be on both of our national networks, which is incredible at the same time um, because there's only one. And so we're going to share it. And that's an incredible feat. Um, partners like Tangerines so Tangerine was the first Canada only partner to um, step up to the plate before we had games, before we had other things on the, on the docket. And that really helps because it takes one to bring others to the table and we need corporate support to, to make games like this happen. Um, but also I think, you know, the point um, that Noel just made about what you see on the court inspires you in the future. I think that, you know, folks like Kia Nurse being in broadcast for the Raptors has helped people see and get familiar with the WNBA um, in our market. And that is really exciting. Um, you know, seeing Bridget play in the game that will be here in May is going to be incredible. Um, and you know, I know, I know Natalie's on that roster and, and she won't be playing, but, but folks will, will know their names. And really the goal for us is to inspire that next generation of Noels that saw their first game that came to the game that want to now that see a path to growth and playing. Um, because I, I really feel like there is so much ceiling for the W there's so much room to grow and it's incredibly exciting to build something um and and you know the players are inspirational the game is amazing and a lot of people just haven't had a chance to see it so we're excited to bring it I think you make such a great point Leah in that in the fact that like you're right it's almost like if you could see it you could believe it you could become it and oftentimes with the men's side of basketball we we think about the Carter effect right? Like, oh, Vince Carter yeah. was this generational player. And now he inspired like Andrew Wiggins. He inspired like the Nemhards and everybody else who's like been, you know, old enough to like grow up with him. And even if you're five years old, you still remember it. 
Um, and so that's like the impact beyond the court that inspires careers. Um, and so with that being said, Noel, I wanna actually go back to you. Um, when we talk about impact, you know, how does basketball have the, that inspiring effect on the future generations for both girls and women? And how might the expansion of the WNBA impact grassroots development and interest in women's basketball in Canada from your perspective and what opportunities might arise out of this decision or Canadian players, coaches, officials moving forward? It's a lot, I know. <laughs> Start anywhere. <laughs> you know, it's basketball teaches you about life, life skills, um, you know, how to work with the team, how to get through adversity, how to be on time. Um, and these are things, you know, you learn as an athlete, but what it also, what also basketball presents is just more opportunities, not just as um, on the court as a player, but, you know, when you're in a sport, you can, uh, you, you now can understand, you can be a coach, you can be a general manager, you can own a team, you can be behind the scenes, you could be a journalist. So the game creates opportunities, yes, for women to play, but also opportunities for women to work in sport, no matter um, what their desires or needs are. So just imagine, you know, young kids under, you know, coming up growing and seeing the WNBA, and especially if we can expand to Canada, what that generates in their minds about um, just what they can dream about and what they can really uh, see because it's now tangible. It's not right there in front of them um, for, their, for them to see the, the opportunities that are at hand. So on the grassroots level, it becomes even more imperative or it becomes a little bit more intentional about how you teach and what you can teach and what they can see um, because it is, again, I'll say it, it's right there in front of them. And I think it's it's important at the grassroots level to to, for, for not only like teaching the kids, but teaching the coaches and teaching all of these, um, the adults about, you know, the resources and other opportunities that come with having opportunities like um, the WNBA um, in Canada. So, you know, it's, again, there are, 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 are endless opportunities in the sport, not solely to play the sport. Um, so the, the sooner that uh, the youth know that and understand that, the sooner that they can see what their interest is and then you know, you can train them from there. No, well, just sticking with you real quick, I just want to follow up. Uh, you know, you, you mentioned something so important in terms of just like that, how it impacts you and how it gives you opportunities, like, you know, just even beyond the court. And I'm fortunate to have a twin sister that plays professional basketball overseas. Um, she just finished her, her season in Sweden. But yeah, as somebody like yourself who's played overseas, um, like, Talk to me about the opportunities that also gardeners, like if say not everybody can make the WNBA or the NBA, but like just the able, the ability to travel around the world, having seen professional players and then pursuing that career as well. Correct. Um, it's, it's important, you know, these opportunities continue. Um, you know, WNBA creates other opportunities and basketball in general can create other opportunities. Playing overseas, a lot of athletes have had amazing careers over there and some athletes have had long careers. And then, you know, as we saw in Rebecca Gardner, she comes back to the WNBA as a 20 something year old rookie, but is an amazing, has an amazing impact on her team. Um, again, it's understanding that it is um, through the sport that you can find whatever your niche is. Um, and yeah, I, I agree with you. If it wasn't for overseas, um, I wouldn't have traveled the world. I wouldn't have learned about other cultures and other people and understand, um, you know, how to be inclusive, how to be accepting of everything um, because of, you know, what we see not only on the basketball court, but in your, in your daily life. And so, it, again, if, you know, one thing can create so many opportunities for uh, young boys and girls to just dream big, um, it, is, it, it is important to have it. It's important to grow it and cultivate it. I love that. I love that. Um, Kisa, I want to go straight to you for this one. Um, this is interesting because I feel like, you know, last, last conversation we had, um, Shelby was talking about a ripple effect um, in terms of just like how you open one door and like seven other doors could open because of it. Um, this is opening a door. Having a game in Canada is 100% is opening. When I think about your league, Hoop Queens, and where that stands, how does Hoop Queens now get affected or impacted by having this game in Toronto? 
Yeah, I like the impact of the May 13th game. It's going to be exciting time for the city, one, and exciting time for like women in, in sport in general, like not just basketball, just like seeing that there's professional like players on like on Canadian soil. I feel like representation is like the biggest thing for for this game and just seeing just seeing that there, there is representation and even on and off the court I'm sure there's going to be female um, reporters and broadcasters and all female staff like I'm sure like Leah I know you're going to be doing a great job on that so I, we trust you um, but yeah just creating like creating that representation with like just around the whole entire weekend the game like it's going to be such a great time for young women and the next generation just to see that like Hey, this is a possibility. Whether you, whether you, you know, you strive to go D one, whether you strive to go play in youth sport, whether you strive to go overseas, um, it's 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 possible. You know, showing that there's a possibility here. Um, whether it's at Hoop Queens, whether it's WNBA, there's it's po there's more possibilities growing on Canadian soil, and um, it's just it's just gonna be an exciting time and, and fun time for for the city because it's it's literally three weeks before Hoop Queens as well. So I feel like the momentum, it's gonna start the momentum for, for Hoop Queens and, and it's, it's, it's gonna be amazing. Um, Kisa, also just sticking with you on this one as well. Um, how else do you feel that you know fans, family, friends can support women's basketball in Canada aside from just tuning into the game one time May 13th? Yes, I know. I know this is like, it, it may seem a little rude and like, you know, common sense, hey, but you know, just showing up like just showing up um there's canadian basketball all year round you know there's yeah. there's youth sports there's d1 you can you can tune in there's canadian girls playing in d1 okay. um, you can tune in and you can show up to games there's osba there's can leads there's hoop queens there's global jam there's so many like basketball all year round it's not just um, a certain time where you can support women it's it's all year round you know and and making sure that you know you 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 give back to the youth as well, you know, um, helping those youth face barriers, like helping them pay for a, a basketball league or, or their, their, their um, registration fees or whatever it is. Like there's, there's so much ways to support. Um, and I think another way is, you know, information sharing. It's free. It's literally it doesn't take any to repost a schedule or a game that's coming up. Um, that's like a biggest thing, visibility and accessibility. And as social media grows, I feel like um, everyone just needs to get on board of just, just, it takes nothing to just share something. Um, and, and, and it helps a lot and it goes a long way. So, yeah, I agree a hundred percent. Like it's, it's interesting because I often get posed with the question myself in terms of, um, Oh, why would a WNBA team work here? Or would there be any interest in a team? And I always like, uh, yes, there would be. And I, I, and this is like a, a small example of what May 13th is going to be. But I remember when Duquesne came and they played UConn and, and this is when Kia Nurse was still playing for UConn at the Miami Athletic Center and mm -hmm. that sold out like also in like I think an hour or two like it was also a sellout like you can get a ticket yeah. um I, just, I don't know if you, do you remember that game no I didn't I was probably in PEI to be honest you might have been PEI still you might have still been playing still yeah so, yeah but, um, but honestly, I, I think that even just now like like Canada basketball is doing a great job of like like putting the women first and no offense to the men but just putting the women first and and making sure that we get that visibility and accessibility to like you know people there's no excuse not to buy a ticket there's no excuse not to show up to a game yeah. you know I feel like before it, there was oh I don't know where to buy a ticket I don't know where to sh to, yeah. to watch the game Kendra Basswell is doing a great job of like just promoting that so it's in your own backyard exactly um I think Leah I'm gonna have to get to you for this one because you know as much as we could you know, give rainbows and flowers out, um, we got to talk about the hurdles that still remain. Um, what do you think is the biggest hurdle or challenge that's facing the women's game? Um, you could say we could do it from the Canadian perspective or from a more holistic perspective, if you'd like, um, in, in terms of growing it and, and where it is right now. I mean, I only see opportunity when I think about the women's game. Um, I, I do think that, you know, the hurdle has been not thinking big enough. Um, and so really that is how we try to paint the picture, like going into a sales meeting and telling people we were not just bringing a game, but we were bringing a to Scotiabank arena and we intended to sell every single seat. The fir first reaction we got from many people was like, seriously? And then we're like, we're going to do it. We have a plan. Here's our plan. Here's how we do it. Like I have confidence and 
18 years of experience at the NBA. And it was just like, we just kept getting yeses um, because it was a vision that they hadn't heard before. And it, and you know, it, it, it's an opportunity for us to change opinions about women's professional sport period. Um, this will be an incredibly successful game. It'll be flawlessly executed and it will be an amazing time. And I am so excited for my boys to sit in that arena and see women play on that court because the germ of this idea, and I, I share it because I'm, I'm almost embarrassed to admit it. I worked in sports for so long was my son, when he was six said to me during a Raptors game, mommy girls don't play basketball. And I said, of course they do. What do you mean? I started talking with the WNBA and he said, he pointed to the court again and said, I only ever see boys play. Mm. And I was like, it's as simple as that. That's, we can probably make that happen. And so that's where it started was, you know, how do we, how do we get a game here? How do we make that happen? Yep. Um, and when the vision is big enough, people sign up. And I think that's really something that I'm jazzed about. Um, I'd love to hear what Noel has to say on this because I mean, the Seattle storm is incredibly successful um, and, and they're an outlier in some ways. And so would love to hear what you say about this too. Yeah, absolutely. Like, uh, like for just before I could go to Noel, de definitely. But Leah, real quick, how satisfying was it when you sold out in hours? I, I knew we would, I had no <laughs> doubt. Like it was, it, it does make you kind of want to say, I told you so to the folks yeah. that, you know, but, but I didn't, I took the high road, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was exactly what, you know, the vision we manifested, it was exactly what we thought would happen. We knew from our numbers that we could make oh. that happen and we did. And it's, it's amazing. Yep. I love it. I love that. Um, and thanks for sharing the story about your son. Cause it's very relatable in terms of just like where the progression is and it is now because also, it's funny because I, I talk at universities once in a while and I, I kind of get a sense of where sport culture is going and where it's at right now. In term, and right now, I get a lot of young men, a lot of young boys coming to me and asking me about the WNBA more than ever before, more than even when I was in school. And so I just feel like it's out there. The brand is out there. It's doing so well on social media. You see the numbers, they speak for themselves. You see the Iowa versus Louisville game and they got like a 2.4 million viewership, um, which they're also reporting that beat out any NBA game um, that's been on ESPN this season, which is also pretty insane. But Noel, I want to go for you to talk about what the biggest hurdle you've seen in the game and how you grow it. Yeah, I think about a couple of things I actually was going to talk about um, that viewership game of the NCAA women's game. I think this notion that people don't watch women's sports or when or specifically women's basketball, uh, we continue to knock down those walls and, and, and show that people do watch it if you put it on TV and if you have it for, um, you know, it to be viewed. Um, the biggest thing to understand too, and, you know, as a former player, the other hurdle is this salary, you know, playing, paying players what they deserve. Um, you know, but we all know that salary is directly connected to revenue and, and, and filling seats and, you know, driving revenue comes from, again, those games and having fans there and, you know, buying, looking at our product and um, really wanting to be a part of our vision. So I think that continues to be the biggest hurdle, like Leah's saying, like getting all these no's, but no, like you're thinking too small. Think very big because time and time again, women have proved and showed that uh, we are more than capable of, of anything imaginable um, if we have the help and continue to have the resources. So um, I think that's the biggest thing to, to, to continue to garner the interest and garner the respect of a lot of times our male counterparts to say, hey, we can't do this alone, but if we need to, <laughs> we can push ourselves. I, I love that that answer. And um, just real quick, anybody who's like all the participants who are watching and are still with us, thank you for one. And two, put your questions in. We got some time. So these are some amazing minds to pick. Um, so go right ahead, throw some th throw some questions out there. Um, Noelle, just hanging on to what you said, because it's it, you are in such a unique position, having been a player and now a coach. And I remember, I think it was 2018, that the new collective bargaining agreement came out and it upped the salaries and it upped a few things. Like uh, I believe the something around maternity leave was increased and, and just even addressed. Um, what differences have you seen um, basically from 
basically before the collective bargain agreement update to now and how much further does it need to go in order for the sport to, to truly thrive? Yeah, we're a, a league that caters to our players, which is an amazing thing. And when the, the players directly voice what needs to improve about our league, I think our, own, our, our leadership does an amazing job of coming to an agreement and figuring out you know, what needs to happen for our player experience to be top notch because they are professionals and they deserve to be treated as such. Um, now talking about salary, I wish <laughs> I played a little bit later. And even <laughs> in IL, this money that these college athletes are making, I'm like, I was a little bit <laughs> too old. Um, but I think there is a, there is constant growth um, in that aspect of our game, the business side of our game. Um, I think it's important to, to continue to cater to our players and for them to, because um, they are the product, they make the product. And when they're at their best, when they are getting, you know, the best of the best, um, then our product becomes better. Um, you, know, and, you know, we, we stand on the shoulders of the giants people who are, who started this league and, you know, the Cynthia Coopers and the Lisa Leslie's and um, all of those former players who, you know, put their best foot forward and, you know, crawled in a way said that we can walk and run now um, with the progress of our league. I think, I think we're in a good spot. I think we still have a ways to go, but um, it's great to see these changes as it relates to, to the players getting what they deserve. Yeah, absolutely. A hundred percent. It's, it's interesting how, I just find it interesting how you invest in women and it pays itself right back. Um, and I agree with you because, I mean, I don't know about Kisa, but I'm like five years removed from the game playing myself. And I was, I'm still like name image likeness right now. NIL deals like, whoo, they be making money. <laughs> so oh, I feel you on that one, girl. Um, Natalie Achama, uh, she actually asked a question. Uh, hey, Natalie. Uh, she said, how the average, how can the average fan at home grow the game? I feel like Kisa did a great job on touching on that earlier. Um, also, just so you, just for you, Noel, uh, it looks like Chrissy says, she just wanted to say she, they got a lot of love for you out in Vancouver. Um, she said that her daughters ages seven and nine get to watch you work and lead with the storm, uh, but they wish the storm would come to Canada. So Leah? Maybe, maybe next game. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not saying nothing. Um, all right. We got, uh, what advice do you have, uh, do the panelists have for youth in trying to create opportunities for their community and are not registered, but are doing it on a volunteer basis to give back to communities? Uh, Kisa, I'll go to you for that one. How can, how can, uh, it looks like, how can youth create opportunities in their communities? Yeah, just, I mean, just start it. Like I, for me, I, I seen the gap. Um, I seen where the university athletes and the high school athletes, they come back from their season and they don't have a space to run. That's how Hoop Queen started. We, I literally just like, oh, I was like, okay, well, I mean, I know I, I before when I, when we used to play, we didn't have any women's runs, um, to go back to. So I just, I literally just started it and then, um, yeah, I, I branded it. And then that's how, that's how, it kind of went viral and um if you have an idea or if you have a community that has that that's following you or you have youth to serve start it um and then you know see where it goes because if, if that's your passion that's your purpose live within it so yep um so we have sorry we're getting a lot of questions now and i appreciate it you guys are awesome um Can I add something to that Savannah? absolutely um, I was going to say too that there's a lot of people, especially girls, that decide that at some point they might not be good enough to keep playing um, and they drop out. And I think that there's a huge set of opportunities within sport that are beyond the court. So, you know, if you are one of those players that um, think that, you know, you, you may not be headed for D1, um, there are other opportunities and there's things that we're like within the Canada basketball realm desperate for people to be participating as officials, taking mm -hmm. the training, you know, giving back in that way. Um, volunteers are amazing and, uh, we need a ton of them. I don't think we recognize them nearly enough. And so, you know, saying thank you goes a long way to all of those club administrators, all of those people that are doing all the paperwork to rent the gyms. Um, and, and, you know, none of what we do at the professional level would be possible without everyone else at the grassroots level. And so, you know, I just want to take the opportunity to say thank you, because I know there's probably a ton of folks listening that spend all of their free time working in basketball and we, you know, may not know all of your names, but we appreciate you. 
I love yeah. that. Ah, yeah. Yep. I, like it's literally thank you. Just say thank you. Yep. Um, well, yeah, I'm gonna stick with you. And this is a this is a question. Um, if you're comfortable with answering it, this is from Amy Shields. The people want to know what's next for the WNBA in Canada. Is this game the catalyst for more? I hope so. I mean, <laughs> I uh, I'm based in Toronto, so so my job is is really to oversee our business in Canada. Um, right now, this is the one big thing we have planned. We haven't started looking at next season yet, but. Um, but yeah, you can you can bet that I am pitching for for additional um, whether it's games or activations. I do think that we can create great content to tell the stories of the amazing women in the WNBA, and that we can do that every single day of the year. We don't need to wait for the season to start. Um, there is so much opportunity, and and it is something that you know our team in Canada at the NBA is 60% women, which a lot of people don't realize. Um, and so this is something we're, we're super excited to be even, you know, touching in a little way. So the more we can grow it, the more we will, but ultimately I, I don't really control that. Um, I'll do as much as I can. Um, but yeah, I still have to sell it up the chain. Oh, you still have to sell it up the chain. No, of course it's a, it's a partner. It's, it's such a, a collaborative space in terms of sports. It's not just like one yes or one answer. It's like, how do we collectively make this work? So absolutely, I know Leah, you're doing your best. You're doing everything. Um, has, don't make me read your bio again. Um, Kat, uh, so this one's coming from Catherine. Uh, Keys, I'm gonna go back to you for this one. Um, what's the most important thing to harness and champion when looking to work as a woman in the sports industry? Um, my biggest thing is to just don't, don't take no for an answer. <laughs> Literally, I think Leah can attest to us as well. Just taking, taking off, don't take no for an answer and also just have confidence when you walk into rooms and know that um, you are important, you're valued, your opinions, your um, thoughts, anything that your ideas are, are valued. You know, I feel like a lot of times when us women, we, we walk into rooms, we have that imposter syndrome um, where it's like, do we belong here? Like, should I even speak up? Um, it, you know, how will I, how will I sound kind of thing? We, we doubt ourselves a lot of times. And um, I think once we get over that hurdle um, of just, you know, having confidence and, and walking with your held head high like a queen, mm -hmm. uh, then we, 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 it's like the, no one, stop, no one can stop us. Um, so yeah, just taking no for an answer and, and any, in any door that you see, that's, um, that's closed, you kind of just kind of have to bust it down, <laughs> bust it down and, and yeah. And if that door doesn't open, then try the next one. Um, because there's a door that's going to open. <laughs> so. I love that. I, 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 yeah, but that's literally like the story of my career as well. Like, you know, I didn't wait for a door to be open to be a woman in, in sport media. I literally, especially a black woman, the intersectionality of that woman in sport media, it's, you know, I pitched a WNBA show. Uh, and luckily, like I said before, like I, I had amazing guests like Noelle come on it and help grow that show that ended up leading to more opportunities in, in this space as well. But no, I actually want to pick your mind on this real quick because you were an assistant coach, or sorry, you're a player while still coaching high school girls basketball. Um, what was that dynamic like? How were you able to manage both? And how important was it for you to, while you're still playing, like full-time athlete schedule, give back to the community? It was huge. Um, it was, you know, also the high school that I went to. And I had an amazing time in high school and um, had a lot of support and Coaching while I was still playing um, was a challenge. I, I like challenges, but um, I, I quickly learned I had a passion for teaching basketball to my high school kids. And at that level, it's bigger than just basketball. It's not solely about the basketball. Every day I had a responsibility to be just a mentor, mm -hmm. a, a coach, um, a disciplinarian, sometimes a family member, sometimes a confidant, like all of these things, all of these roles that I had to play in these young lady's life um I, I I had pride in that and I felt like I was so responsible for making sure I poured into them every single day um because it was just my duty at that at, at that age they're so impressionable um and as they go into college and onto life you want them to have these values and instill these values that 
you know, obviously they have a foundation with their parents, but also aside from their parents and their family, I'm probably the person they spend majority of their time with. So how am I intentional about uh, giving them the tools that they need to be successful, not only on the basketball court, but in life. And so I, I really love that level because um, yes, basketball was the icing on the cake, but um, it was deeper and it was more than just the basketball. It was it was very special. And even now, like my going, I went to the senior game of one of my athletes from high school and um, just to continue to have these relationships and know that it was just not a one-off, that I am somebody that, that I'm in their life as a reliable resource or as someone that they can depend on even you know, after high school, to me, that was like super powerful and I, I enjoyed it. Uh, it's like lifelong relationships. And I, and I, I, I mean, I can only imagine the impact that you've had on just, you know, young women and their families. Cause it's, it's not just fit. if when you touch like somebody uh, beyond what they're doing on the court, like, you know, you have that impact on, on their life you probably impacted five other people you didn't even realize because now they're going, they're taking that light and they're spreading it around in other ways as well. So I can only imagine what that carryover has been. And I'm it, like, just by the sounds of it, you built that like lifelong relationship with these players. And so I, I'm sure that's must be just so special for you. It is, it's super special. It is, it's, it's unlike anything. And I, you know, I, I, I don't want to minimize what I do right now, coaching professional women, but just to be able to have such an impact in the lives of individuals, um, it, it's something that just um, uh, sets the tone for like who I strive to be um, every single day. I'm trying mm -hmm. to be my best self every single day. Yep. And I know, like, as I know, as Kisa knows, like the impact that coaches have on you, like it sticks with you forever, good or bad, <laughs> good or bad, but preferably good. Um, <laughs> Leo, you got a question? For you, we only got like about three more minutes left. Thank you guys, everybody, by the way, for the amazing questions. You guys came through for real, for real. Um, Leah, so there's a there's a there's a hot the hot you're getting all the hot topic questions, yo. From, this one's from Link. He says, um, if you're able to discuss this publicly this early, we're, we're putting you in a hot seat. Sorry, Leah. Um, I'm interested in what Leah would have to say about WNBA partnerships in Canada before we even get a team here. Are there any details that we can know at this stage? Um, well, sure. And hi, Link. It's nice to, to have a question from you. I know, Link. Um, I, uh, I would say it's not different than how we sell the NBA in Canada, right? We have, there's only one team in Canada in the NBA, but we represent all 30 teams and we do national deals with big brands. And so what the types of things we can do are things like retail activation. So, you know, put the WNBA mark or team marks on products at POS and put it across the country. We can do contests where we take people to games in the U.S. Um, personally, I'd love to create a travel product. You know, uh, 20,000 plus people are going to come to this Toronto game. Why not take us as a group and fly to games in the U.S. during the W season? I would love that. I think there's a lot of people that would love that. So, you know, we're investigating a couple of different ways, but there's also just the very basic, which is content. Um, and it is telling the stories of the amazing players in the WNBA. And and because I think we're the one of the only leagues where the league mark is more popular than the team marks are. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have a huge opportunity to educate because there's all this interest in the league, but there isn't a deep knowledge. And so sponsors can help us do that by getting into all of the places where they already communicate to consumers. And so, you know, we're looking at brands that can really help us grow the game together. Uh, and those that want to commit to that, to that concept, because it's, it's mutually beneficial in the long run. And so, so those are the types of things that we're looking at. I know that's very generic. Um, and, and when I sold more deals, I'll, I'll share what they are, but we, we haven't yet. We're still working on it. Um, but, you know, never say never. I think it's possible. And I think it's possible in the next year. Ah, I love that travel concept. I'm like, I'm like, I was like, uh, can you put me first on the list, please? I'm like, yeah, like let's go together. It'll be fun. Yes, please. And then we can have our foodie talk as well there. Yeah, <laughs> enjoy that. Um, this one's specifically for Kisa. And then I have a personal one for Noel because I'm very curious about this one. Um, and then we'll wrap her up. Uh, Kisa, you have a question saying, uh, are are there any opportunities to volunteer with Hoop Queens and how can we get involved this summer? 
Yes, uh, definitely lots of opportunities to volunteer because we're doing bigger and better this summer. Last year was just our proof of concept year. It was our first year, um, our inaugural year, and it was amazing, but we want to do it bigger and better. So we need a lot more hands on deck. So uh, you can check us out on www.thehoopqueens.com. Um, DM us, you can DM me personally. Um, yeah, we're accepting all volunteers. Uh, a post will be made very, very soon. Um, yeah. That's amazing. Ah, I'm so excited. <laughs> um, and then, Noel, my personal question to you, because I feel like I didn't get to, a chance to really explore this story, but how how did you become involved on the assistant coach uh, coaching side for Canada basketball for the women's team? That's a great question. Um, again, just I, all the opportunities that I've gotten, um, especially as it relates to co coaching, is what other people see within me. So just honestly just got a, call, a phone call like hey are you interested in this and uh, I, I made a couple of calls did my due diligence and returned the call like yeah why not so <laughs> went through an interview process um, and met uh, the amazing staff on Canada basketball um, and you know have an opportunity you know to work with Victor he's he's amazing but to you know have him uh, with his expertise and, and knowledge on the international side and um, my um, experience on the W side and combining us together, um, Denise thought that it would be a great fit. Um, so, uh, yeah, honestly, I can't say like this was like, it just kind of came up, popped up, but I'm super honored, you know, to be a part of Canada basketball. I'm officially Canadian. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't on the bingo card, but we'll take you anyway. <laughs> Natalia Chawa, she uh, sent me the, the national anthem before World Cup. She's like, you need to know this. I know the words. I am official. <laughs> Certified. We'll take it. We'll take it. Well, um, Thank you so much. I guess there's one more anonymous question coming in. It's saying, Savannah, will, Savannah, will we be seeing you work in the WBA game? And I haven't had, I don't have any information on that. I don't know if we are or not. I'm going to, I'm going to put it out there that I'd be very interested in it. Um, and maybe I can manifest it, but I don't know. Okay, I have no go ahead, Savannah. Oh, your... I'm a manifest it. That was a question. That was a question. I swear it wasn't by me. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, once again, just an incredible panel of women that are just out here doing big things in different ways, impacting lives. And I, I'm just so grateful to be surrounded by such amazing talent in this space. So I uh, appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank you very much.